reactions in organic chemistry can be described by the interaction of a filled orbital together with an empty orbital. The most important filled orbital is the highest occupied molecular orbital, or the HOMO, and that's typically associated with the nucleophilic partner. The most important empty orbital is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, and that's typically associated with the electrophilic partner. Together, these two orbitals make up what are known as the frontier orbitals, and they're the most important orbitals that describe reactivity in organic molecules. The filled orbitals that we'll typically encounter in organic chemistry could be a sigma bonding orbital, it could be a non-bonding pair of orbitals, or it could be the pi orbitals. And in each reaction of interest, we're looking for which of these is the highest occupied of those molecular orbitals that's available. Similarly, the possible empty combinations could be sigma star, pi star, or this thing that I've labeled A. What is A? It's an empty atomic orbital that's centered on an atom, like the p orbital in a carbocation. So if the highest occupied molecular orbital in a particular reaction involves sigma on the nucleophilic partner, then that orbital could combine with the electrophilic partner, which in the case of sigma star would be a sigma to sigma star interaction if sigma star happens to be the LUMO. It could be a sigma to A, it could be a sigma to pi star if A or pi star is the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. The next three possibilities arise from uh, having a non-bonding pair of electrons as the highest occupied molecular orbital. And the last three are the possibilities that arise if a pi bond is the highest occupied molecular orbital. Let's put these ideas into practice with a simple example. Our example involves the combination of boron trifluoride, which is going to be our electrophilic partner, together with ammonia, which is going to be our nucleophilic partner, and those will combine to make a new bonding interaction between the boron and the nitrogen atoms. What we need to do is to identify what's the HOMO and LUMO involved in this new bonding interaction, what's the typical order of our molecular orbitals on our energy scale. At the very bottom, the most stable are the sigma orbitals. Above that typically is pi, and above that is N, the non-bonding. Those are all the filled levels. The lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, if it's available in a molecule, is going to typically be A. Above A is pi star, and at the very high end of the energy scale, the most inaccessible of the empty orbitals is typically sigma star, but if there isn't an A or a pi star, then sigma star would be the most accessible empty orbital. So for our electrophilic partner, of bor boron trifluoride, we can go through those empty orbitals and we can conclude that there is an A because this is a six electron boron. There's an empty atomic orbital that's a P orbital in this sp2 hybridized boron atom. Boron atom has as its LUMO the uh, empty atomic orbital centered on boron. We can go through our nucleophilic partner and look for the highest occupied of those orbitals on ammonia. There are sigma bonds, but those are very low in energy. There are no pi bonds, and we can conclude that the highest occupied molecular orbital in ammonia is that non-bonding pair of electrons. So the frontier orbital interaction that we're going to be focused on is that non-bonding pair of electrons on ammonia as the HOMO that's filled, that's going to be combining with the empty, lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, A, that's centered on boron we can construct a molecular orbital diagram for that interaction. It's shown here. The HOMO of nitrogen will combine with the empty orbital that's on borons. There's one pair of electrons that will fall into the new molecular orbital that creates that boron-nitrogen sigma bond. And the curved arrows that I'm showing here remind us of the curved arrow convention that we're typically used to thinking about when we write organic mechanisms. This is the most important pair of electrons that's involved in reactivity, and it comes from the HOMO that interacts with boron's LUMO. We call these the source and the sink. And we can describe that in a more typical way that you might see. Our source, or our HOMO, is the non-bonding pair of electrons. That curved arrow convention shows that that pair of electrons attacks the boron atom, that p orbital centered on boron to make this new nitrogen-boron sigma bond. 